In this video, we're going to talk about the elements folder. So if you want to create a row that has columns with equal heights, you can use the elements holder shortcode to achieve that. Now, if you're familiar with the WordPress Bakery page builder, you might know that this page builder comes with an option of creating equal height columns. We've disabled this option for the bridge theme because we built our own short code to achieve columns with equal height, and that's the elements holder. So let's see some examples of the elements holder on our demo sites. Here in this demo, we see an elements holder that has three columns. And in this example, each column has text that's the same length. Now, when you're building your own elements holders, of course, you do not have to have the same content in each column. You can have columns with more text and columns with less text, and they will always be equal height and they will look nice. On this demo, we also see an elements holder with three columns, except that here, one column is wider than the other columns. And here we can also see an example of a column with a background image. On this demo site, the entire page is pretty much built using element holders. So all of these sections are elements holders with two columns and together they create a very nice layout. All right, so now let's see how we can build an elements holder section from scratch. This here is the site that I will be working on. I have previously imported this modern business demo, so my styles here will be the same as on the demo site. And here at the bottom of this page, after this section here, I'm going to add an elements holder section, something similar to this. I'm going to create an elements holder with two columns. In the first column, I'm going to place some text and a button. And in the second column, I'm going to add an image. So let's get started. This here is the page in my backend. So I have my heading and my text. So at the bottom of my page, I'm going to add a new row. And inside this row, I'm going to add the code elements holder. Here it is. Now for the elements holder, there are several options here. The most important one is the number of columns. So I previously said that I'm going to create a section with two columns. So let's go ahead and choose two. Here we have an option called columns proportion. And as the name suggests, here you can set the proportion of your columns. We've previously seen an example on a demo site of an elements holder that has columns that are different proportions. So here the first one is wider than the other two. So that's what this field here is for if you want one of your columns to be wider. In my case, I want my columns to be equal, so I'm going to go with the 50-50 proportion. So now let's save. Now here inside this elements holder, I'm going to click on this plus icon, and now I can add these code elements holder items. And these items will be acting as columns. So let's go ahead and add one. I'm going to add another elements holder item. So I'm going to click on this plus icon here. When I hover over it, it says append to this code elements holder. And I'm going to add another item. So now I have two of these elements holder items inside my elements holder. And the number of elements holder items you add, it must correspond to the number of columns that you've chosen. So I chose two columns and I have two elements holder items. All right, now let's go ahead and add content to these elements holder items. I'm going to click on this plus icon inside my first elements holder item. Now I can add pretty much any short code I want. So first of all, I'm going to add a heading. 
In order to add additional content to my elements holder item, I'm going to click on this plus icon. When I hover over it, it says append to this code elements holder item. Let's add a text block. Now I'm going to add a button. And I'm also going to add some empty space short codes in order to have some spacing between my text and my button. So now I've added content to my first elements holder item. That will be this section here. Now let's edit this elements holder item. I'm going to click on this pencil icon in order to bring up the options. And here under background color, I'm going to choose a light gray background color. And in my second elements holder item, I'm going to be placing an image. So let's go ahead and edit this elements holder item. Here there's a field that says background image. So I'm going to go ahead and add my image here. Here under background image, there's a field called background size. Now if you want your image to cover the entire column, you will want to choose this option cover. If this option is set to initial default, then if your image is smaller than the column, it will start repeating. And this is a good choice to use if you want to have a pattern. But in my case, I just want my image to cover the column. So I'm going to choose this option. And let's save. So let's save this page and see what it looks like. So here we now have an elements holder section. The text and the button are flushed to the edges of the column. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm going to go ahead and edit my first elements holder item. And here we have a padding field. In this field, you can enter your padding values either in pixels or percentages. Here we have an example in pixels. For responsive layouts, percentages tend to work better. So I'm going to enter my padding in percentages. So when you're entering your padding, you should enter four values. They correspond to the top, right, bottom, and left padding respectively. So in my case, this is my top padding, my right padding, my bottom padding, and my left padding. So let's save this now. And let's refresh the page. So this looks much better now. Let's go ahead and look at the remaining options. Here we have vertical and horizontal alignment. So these options are fairly self-explanatory. You can set your content inside the elements holder item to top, middle, or bottom alignment. You can also choose left center or right alignment. So for example, if you want to create a row where the content inside that row is aligned to the middle, a good way to do that would be to use an elements holder and to set your elements holder items to have middle vertical alignment. Okay, and down here we have advanced scroll animations. This option is for more advanced users. In these two fields, you can add your custom CSS in order to have animations and scroll. But because this is an advanced topic, we will not be covering it in this tutorial. Over here, we have a tab that says width and responsiveness. And here you can place different padding values for different screen sizes. For each field, you can see the screen resolution. So this is the resolution at which your padding values will apply. 
we already saw this padding field here. So whatever value you enter here, this will affect all screen sizes. If you do want to have a different value for a particular screen size, you can enter that value here. So let's see an example. Let's see what this page looks like on mobile. So this looks pretty good. But let's say that I want to even further decrease the top and bottom padding on mobiles. So here in this width and responsiveness tab, down here it says padding on screen size below 480. So here I can enter a different padding value to be applied for mobiles. So this was the original padding that I entered. And let's set 10% padding for the top and bottom padding values. Okay, so let's save changes and refresh my page. This was the page previously. And this is the page now with smaller padding values for mobiles. Now, what about our image? The image with the tablet seems to have disappeared here on the mobile screen. Looking at this elements holder item, we can see that it's empty and that I actually added my image as a background image for my item. Whenever you have element holder items that are empty, in responsive mode, when the columns stack on top of one another, these element holder items will not show. However, there's an easy way to fix this. I'm going to edit my elements holder item and I'm going to assign it a padding value. After assigning it a padding value, this will force my elements holder item to expand in responsive mode and my image should show. So let's refresh the page. And sure enough, the image is now showing. And now that we're on the topic of responsive display, I'm just going to resize my screen for a moment. As I'm resizing my screen, we can see that at a certain stage, the element holder items collapse into a one column layout. And you can actually control at what stage this happens. So let's go back to our page backend. Now I'm going to edit the elements holder itself. So that's this pencil icon here. Here there's a tab called width and responsiveness. And in this field, it says switch to one column. So here you can choose the breakpoint at which the columns collapse into a one column layout. And in this field, you can choose the alignment for your content once they collapse into the one column layout. So now we've covered the basic settings for creating a responsive elements holder section. In the following section, we're going to go over some common mistakes that people make when using the elements holder. Here I have a row that's split into two columns and inside each column, I've placed an elements holder. And this is an incorrect way of using the elements holder because if you build your columns this way, they will not be equal height. In order to have equal height columns, you should add a row with only one column and inside that row, you should place an elements holder. Within the elements holder, you can choose the number of columns that you want to have. And then inside this elements holder, you should add your elements holder items. If you have an elements holder where you want to have an image in one of the columns, then you might try adding that image by placing a single image shortcode into the elements holder item. This is not a good way of adding your image because if you do so, your image will not be responsive. So on different screen sizes, the image might not be the same height as the other columns. You might see some empty space underneath the image. So in order to avoid this, you should not place your image as a single image shortcode. Instead, you should edit the elements holder item and you should place your image as the background image. So that brings this video to an end. I hope that you enjoyed it. 
If you have any further questions about the elements holder, feel free to ask us in the comment section and we'll try to get back to you. Thank you for watching.